Hey guys, welcome to another video. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yes, I'm wearing a jacket and that is because uh, I forgot to have the heating on in my in my office last night. So it's freezing cold in here. In this episode, we will be talking about rendering with F-Storm as usual. And I have two topics I want to cover. One being uh, how to add some nice atmosphere to your images and by that I'm not talking about the built-in atmosphere in your render settings. And the second one would be color grading because I want to show you a bit of unconventional way of doing color grading which is not professional in any way uh, but it kind of works actually so and it's a really nice trick so but first of all let's talk about the scene so here I have my little spaceship this model is bought it's actually a blender model so if you buy this and want to use it in 3ds max you have to redo all the shaders uh, we also have a plane with just some mega scans textures you can see i have a displacement map on it and the lighting super simple just a simple f-storm sunlight and in the render settings you will see that we have an f-storm sky so no hgri involved i do have a lookup table in the scene we will get into that because that's a part of the whole color grading thing so i'll leave that for now and if i render this scene now you can see it looks like this see there's a lot of ugly repetition on the ground doesn't look very good but if we jump to the camera it totally works you, you don't really see that repetition i mean i could i could solve that with some random rotation stuff but i just haven't bothered so um, this image doesn't look very good. I want to add some atmosphere to it. What could I do? Well, I could go here. I could uh, enable the atmosphere. By the way, I have it might be rendering quite slow because I've disabled two out of three GPUs because they make a lot of noise. I don't want you to have to listen to that. So what I can do is, you know, I can increase this distance to get a little bit more uh, so I can see something. Maybe I can also increase the height a little bit. And this kind of scatters the skylight or the sunlight quite nicely. If I would be looking at this image like this, I think this looks good. You know, I am done. I'm happy with this. I settled with this because I have nothing to compare to. But I also know that there's a much better way to do it that will be looking much better. So uh, let's dive into that. I want to keep the atmosphere but i want to have it as a at a larger distance and the reason for that is just to hide the background basically because if i turn it off you can see the the edge of the ground meeting the skylight uh, the blue sky looks super boring so i want to have the atmosphere only at a distance to get that to just fade out in the background but it doesn't really affect the the ship much uh, so the trick here that i want to talk to you about or show you is that i have a teapot covering the whole scene. I want to copy this to another scene. So let's say that I have my teapot here and I want to make this basically a cloud. So if I have covered this in previous videos, so what I do is to add a F-Storm volume and it just disappears. That's because we don't have a material on it. So I can create a, an F-Storm volume material. Apply that. So let's, uh, let's play around with it a little bit. Uh, I want to have the scattering a little bit blue. We can't really see much. Actually, we can change the distance. Uh, let's make that a thousand. So we can, now it looks more like an actual cloud. And I want this scattering to be a little bit bluish. So something like that. And the absorption could be a little bit warm. Maybe like sand colored, like this. This looks pretty nice. Let's see what this does. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Scatter action one. So this is just a solid volume, uh, super, super simple. Um, now I want to make this looking more like a cloud. And you know, cloud are not linear. This is just a solid, like just linear fog. There's no variation in it. So what we do is to create a noise. And in this case, I want to have uh, a circular noise. I want to put that to multiply and maybe make this 20,000 and apply that to the density map. And you can see that something happened. Oops. And now we get some noise. And what we can do, we can change these. So we add a larger value and that kind of, the surface follows basically shrinks the surface. And then you can compensate that with a fall off offset. And what happens is that it kind of exaggerates the shapes. So if I, if I go and change the scatter distance here, to see better. Now we get some clum clumps. If I would have a hundred and a hundred here, or actually just zero, zero, you still get the shape of the teapot. And I don't want that. I want this to be looking like a cloud. So that's why I add large values. So to get this looking more like just clumps. All right. 
But this is quite boring. So what I want to do is I want to have another of these noise maps and I want to make this maybe 3000 and I want to have a mix map like this. I want to just put a gray mask so we blend them like 50 50. Apply that to the volume and uh, looking pretty good. You could, if you wanted, change these to like turbulence to get different results. I mean, if I change this, you can see now how that affects the cloud. But in my case, I want to go with circular because I kind of like this look of it. I can also increase the contrast. That kind of adds more detail to it. I can also play around with the iterations in the noise map too, because more iterations means basically more details. You can see now this is looking pretty nice. I like this. With like a smog cloud. Now another thing I want to do, because if I put this in the scene, I get quite sparse um, you know, volume. One thing that you can do actually is to go to uh, maps and just add a color correction, invert the noise map, put this into the density, and this will look bad. This will look kind of bad actually, but the thing what happens is that inside of this volume I get these holes. The stuff that were clouds before I inverted it are now holes, so I get more thick um, volume, and this is a nice trick to add some cool effects to your render. So, um, not really sure if it actually does a lot of difference, but uh, I did it this way and it looked good. So. And let's change the distance here to a thousand, like this. All right, this is looking good. So now if I copy this and I paste it back to my scene, I'm just gonna delete this one, I paste it back here. And now, if I render this now, I can, I can also make this a looking like a, a box, so I don't have to actually watch it. So now if I render this, let's see what it looks like. And bam. This looks bloody amazing. Now, again, uh, it's slow rendering. I mean, rendering volumes like this takes a longer time than using the just the atmosphere. Also, I disabled my GPU, so it's really slow. Um, but I will pause the video and render them high res so we can do some comparisons. Here we have both of the images, and you can clearly tell the difference. Um, not only does the volume, this is partly because we had some scattering colors, but also tried to actually apply the same scattering colors as in this volume into the atmosphere and I did not get the same result. So having the like physical volume inside the scene not only affects the colors in a really nice way, but you can see here for example, the glow is way different. Also down here, you kind of get this really nice light beam here, which I'm not, I'm not actually getting here. But that could also be because since you know we had a noise pattern in the volume, and there might be like a hole in the noise just there, so that might be the reason why that there's no actual like beam. But the glow around here that's happening naturally, that's not lens effects. That's actually happening inside the volume. Looks really, really nice. And you can see that the, if we go here for example. There's just this like milky kind of effect that just adds a lot of, of cinematic look to it. And one thing I also noticed, if we look at, or we can look here for example, you can see that it actually affects the depth of field a little bit. So it looks different here, kind of like the, um, I think the volume is kind of disrupting the light rays a bit. So that's why you get this like natural it's not depth of field, it's just a natural like blurriness. It just messes up the lights a little bit. And if I get to guess, I think it's because of this. If we have a an object, wait, well, sorry, here's the camera and here's the object. So when we use the built-in volume in the render settings, or the, not the volume, but the atmosphere in the render settings, it's just com perfectly linear. So what happens probably is that the lights just travel straight like that and you know it gets washed out but it's not more than that whereas in this case if we have our camera here and the object here I believe that since we have a noise pattern in the fog uh, the noise kind of disrupts 
the lights a little bit when it's traveling through the different levels of noise and that's probably why we get this natural like um, kind of breaking up the the sharpness a little bit adding a lot of cinematic touch to it um, if we would have like a mountain far away in the distance that would probably be more visible but anyways I think that these results really speak to themselves obviously I like the right one better uh, took about twice as long to render but that's totally fine for me if I get nicer results let's get into the color grading and here is my render and like I told you before I'm actually rendering with a lookup table so if I turn that off this is actually the raw render that I get so if I paste that into Photoshop and I will show you a really cool way to do it's a weird and not probably <laughs> in the industry not accepted way of doing color grading but it works and it's actually pretty cool so first I want to do is I want to add a curves so that I can increase the contrast of the image we can adjust this later but something like that now I want to have a gradient map this one you can set whatever color you like here like this you know and that you might have seen this trick before but I'm not done this is not the whole thing and so if I'm, I can do it like this for example then I can put this to soft light and now I get some uh, kind of color grading right but here's the trick you open this you change it from solid to noise so you get a whole bunch of, of colors and then you can reduce the roughness so you get less colors and then you add transparency and then just hit randomize and just continue hitting randomize until you just get something that you like this looks pretty cool this looks ah, not too good 8 out of 10 options you get here will look pretty bad but then once in a while you find something that actually looks pretty nice so this one this looks really cool this one looks even better look at that that's nice of course you can fiddle around with the blending modes now with the opacity you can t continue fiddling around with the curves now this is very much dune inspired and now we can continue adding like a hue saturation for example we can fine tune this however we like all right, and now I can just export a lookup table from here if I want to. So I just click this layer. One thing that you need to do is to have background layers. So I can go to, to probably layer, uh, nope, layer, there it is. Layer, new, background layer, or background from layer, and now this becomes a background layer. Now what I can do is just go to exports, color lookup tables. I can name this Dune, for example, and I'm, you know, just call it Dune save and now I can go back to I mean I, I might be done here but also I can go back to 3d as max here and dune and voila they're now looking identical so there you go just with very simple means you can do a lot of difference to your images also a shout out to Martin uh, my colleague who taught me this color grading trick it's not amazing it's not well, it's kind of amazing actually. It's not perfect, you don't have full control over it, but it's a it's a good way to make a nice starting po point for your color grading. If you don't want to dive into this whole uh, Lumetri or DaVinci Resolve, like, you know, nitty-gritty color grading, this is just a very simple way to do it quickly, dirty, but it's looking good. So, go enjoy this new knowledge. Ciao.